What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another FNAF story breakdown video. Now, it turns out that Haps is actually on its way tomorrow, so I thought that I would uh, quickly finish up the trilogy of stories in Lally's game, ending with perhaps the most interesting of the few. This story seems like your average Fazbear Fright story at first, but the deeper you get into it, the weirder it gets. So without further ado, let's get into everything that you missed in Lally's game. Now before we even get into the story, I have a few things to point out. Firstly, it's good to know that Entom got a digital version of the book early, and it turns out that in the metadata, these stories dated all the way back to 2019, which was before Into the Pit even came out. These stories have been planned for a long time, with Security Breach right by its side. Looking at the front cover, Lally is actually a little inaccurate as he is supposed to be a whiter hue, but when you look at his face it almost looks identical to the creepy faces in Sister Location. Why would this relate? Well, I do have the same question, but it is also important to note that Lally was a name that was used in Pizzeria Simulator for the little Joe puppet in Sister Location. The advertisement was for Lally's Lollies, and if you remember in Fine Player 2, we actually had a similar instance where we had Flo's fabulous eatery that went with Flo's glossy floss. Let's get into Lally's game now. So the opening line of the story is, it's too good to be true. And if I'm being honest, this kind of spoiled uh, a bit of the plot for me, as yes, Cade is too good to be true. He is described as a literal Giga Chad, and uh, there is no way that there was nothing suspicious with him right off the bat. Something that described him was his five o'clock shadow, and I actually didn't know what this was until I looked it up. I thought maybe it was a play on words, and, and it could relate to like the shadow at the end of the story, but nope, a five o'clock shadow is literally just the dark appearance on, on your chin after you shave. Um, and yeah, this is, a, this is quite good evidence that I am a FNAF theorist. <laughs> I look into every single detail, uh, even when it doesn't matter. Speaking of looking at every single detail, it turns out that the reason they don't move in together until after they get married is because that is exactly what Cade wants. Under the assumption that the story is a result of Cade's doing, which I think it is, why would he even try to introduce the trunk to people without them having any trust towards them? Marriage is a symbol of deep trust, and on top of that, it is a big happy spike that means the wife is less likely to have suspicions this early on. So, the movers bring out the old trunk, and the description of it is that it is dirty and scarred with old leather straps and tarnished brass clasps, lock and edging, in addition to a musty odour. Now I feel like we may have seen this trunk before. Yes my friends, this could very well be the FNAF 4 box, or at least a sign that they have similar themes, a parallel. After reading this story, maybe the thing that was in the box was a dead body, or it could have been something that escaped. Remember, there was an asset in FNAF World for an opened version of the box, but there was nothing visible inside of it. In a similar way, Jessica and Cade never saw Lally leave the box, but I think it is implied that that's what happened after seeing the box empty. I keep saying box by accident, I mean trunk. <laughs> Speaking of the trunk though, if you rewind to the final Stitch Wraith Stinger, you may remember a scene where Eleanor jumps at Larson from a trunk in an attic. Every scene in this kind of Stitch Wraith Stinger and the previous one uh, relates to a story from the past, except this one. It's possible it could be referencing Count the Ways because it does mention Christmas decorations and there are strange collectibles, Grandpa was a collector, but it's also possible that this represents Lally's game, meaning Eleanor would be behind this story. We do eventually see the trunk uh, go into the attic at the end of the story when Debbie and Cade are moving in together, so. Now throughout the story there are lots of instances in which Cade seems to just appear out of nowhere as soon as Selina touches the trunk, etc. Um, I think this is a huge early clue that everything that happens is just fabricated by Cade 
for every victim. Remember, not only Selena was affected by Cade, but also Debbie and probably other people too. It's possible there's almost a script. Uh, it almost feels like a TV show with the amount of dramatic irony that is presented in the story, and I think that is on purpose. Now, actually, I've had something a little inaccurate. It turns out that the first time Selena ever saw the trunk was the first time that she and Cade had met and he said it was just old memorabilia. It sounds like the seeds of distrust were actually placed a lot earlier than you may think. When Selena asks Janice, Kate's mum, how she cooks her chicken, so moist on the inside yet crispy on the outside, she responds that it is all sleight of hand. Sleight of hand is of course a term used in magic acts and, uh, and of course illusion. I feel like if Cade was behind all of this it would be a magic act and uh, and Janice would be the magician's uh, assistant. So one good thing to notice is that this story never calls out the Pizzaplex as the mega Pizzaplex, meaning Lally's game was never an arena that existed in the security breach location. Either in the game's universe there exists other Pizzaplexes like the mini Pizzaplex or Lally's game is just in a completely separate continuity. When Selena sees Lally for the first time, it's explained that she feels like it looks like an unfriendly version of the famous friendly ghost, this of course referring to Casper the friendly ghost, which was an animated cartoon about a friendly ghost, and of course, this is a pretty funny oxymoron as she says it's an unfriendly friendly ghost. The final image in the photo album shows Lally staring at Cade with a vaguely hostile expression and then it says, no, not hostile, possessive. This is brilliant writing. The fact that this creepy photo is the last one in the album and it leads Janice to talk about what happens to him means that there was a turning point right there in history that eventually led to Lally's disappearance. The end of the photo album means the end of an era. I believe this is where Cade and potentially Janice were possessed by a supernatural force and that is what gave them malicious intent. This led to the big Lally's game incident and the main events of the story. In the game of charades or charades, Grace points her finger and Selena says point break, which is a 1991 movie where an FBI agent infiltrates a group of bank robber surfers. The agent is played by Keanu Reeves and is called Johnny Utah. I swear, I need to stop finding Utah references in these books. Grace then makes her arms look like wings, like that. Which leads Selena to say The Birds, which is a 1963 thriller primarily about Melanie who plays a prank on her lover Mitch, which ends up backfiring, making all the birds in the town attack people. I guess this has some nice parallels to Lally's game, definitely with the kind of pranking aspect of it. Selena's next guest is The Shining, which is a psychological horror film from 1980 where a man named Jack loses his sanity in an isolated hotel. This is a great one to consider because in a minute we'll be talking a little bit about Cade's psychology. The thing I do want to mention is the way Selena guesses this is the way Grace turns her head like the most iconic scene from that movie, which you've probably seen in a lot of memes. But this one! This one chilled me to the core. The actual answer that Selena didn't actually get was 1975's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which is about a man who faked insanity to get out of prison labour and is sent to a special ward for the mentally unstable. Strangely, the star actor in this one, Jack Nicholson, also plays the main character in The Shining, which, which, which is a really weird coincidence. Now, the mentioning of this movie is so, so telling to me because not only does it build upon the possibility that Cade is mentally insane, it also shows that Selena is such a mess in her confusion about all of it, and that one actually blew my mind. So, Selena sees Lally for a good minute, and in the weeks afterward, she feels like she is being watched. She writes down eight facts, then comes to the conclusion that either Lally is real or she is going completely insane. And this question is the central theme of the entire story. As we just saw with the movies, it could be a story about Cade's mischief, like Point Break. It could be a story about a supernatural occurrence, like the birds. It could be about a man who loses all of his sanity, like The Shining. 
But based off of the correct answer in charades, I think that this story is about a man who faked insanity like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. While it's possible that Selena could be losing her mind, I think all of this was elaborately created by Cade, which begs the question, is he somehow possessed and controlled into doing this, and is Lally real? This is a theory that was first pointed out to me by my good friend Inky Ink, and he'll probably end up making his own video about all of this. But remember, we never actually saw Lally in the trunk. Cade never actually saw Lally in the trunk. He just felt in his heart that Lally was in the trunk. And to me, that is enough to show that there is no truth behind most of what Cade is saying. One sentence that beautifully summarizes everything is the following. Would she be fleeing from Lally or from Cade? Or would she be fleeing from herself? The confusion we have while reading this really matches her thought process and this line alone shows a lot about the mystery of all of this. Selena tries to pry some answers out of Janice and she mentions how there was an accident with a boy called Daniel. Selena asks for elaboration but Janice completely ignores her. Now Janice I think is definitely part of the too good to be true kind of vibe. She definitely knows a lot about the incident and I have a slight feeling that it's safe to say and conclude that Cade killed Daniel. With Janice as well, she doesn't really care about the, the multiple wives that Cade has and she doesn't really ask, we, we never really see her ask about what's happened to Selena when Debbie is there, you know, blah blah blah. Selena is eventually killed and stuffed into the trunk, which is something I'd love an explanation to if Lally isn't real, of course. But then when Cade finds her there, Lally whispers, the game is only for two, Funnily enough, the phrase is described as being five familiar words when, when it's six. And then we are introduced to Debbie, and the whole twist of the story is that this is actually a cycle, a repeated ruse, which carries more confusion. One thing about the final section of the story is that apparently the trunk seems to be glaring back at Cade, which is a good thing to point out, knowing that the ending shows two pinpricks of light that are supposedly eyes. Now, this one is a huge stretch to end with, I know, but I want to end with some weird details right at the end that relate with each other, and I want you guys to help me to do some research to see if I've caught on to something. The new house has an octagonal window in the attic. Octagonal meaning a shape with eight sides, and it is mentioned how Debbie had an aunt with the old-fashioned name of Octavia, which means eighth in Latin. These are both contained in the small ending section, and I'm wondering if this implies that Debbie is the eighth victim. If so, that would mean that Selena was the seventh, but I don't really have many pieces of evidence for that. Maybe there are clues within the story, maybe there isn't, but it's something cool to think about anyway. And there you go, those are all the details that I found in this story. Let me know if there's any other details that you found that I missed. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video. Goodbye.